Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a replacement of the window motor on the driver's side door on my E82 BMW 1 Series. Uh, as you can see, even though the door is open, the window has not dropped. Um, this has been a little bit of a, shall we say, an intermittent fault for quite some time. Um, and it's about time that I actually did something about it. So uh, thank you for stopping by, welcome to the channel. Okay, firstly, just to show you uh, the kind of thing that's going on with the window. Um, in, this, in the open position, the window should have dropped, but it's about five mil or so that it drops. Um, but as you can see, it's not. So I have to give the window a little nudge to get it back in and it should drop when it opens, but again, it's not. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna replace the window motor and, uh, and see, how, uh, see if that re re you know, rectifies the problem. Um, first thing I'm going to do though, however, before, before I start messing around with any of the uh, electrics in the door, is I'm going to disconnect the battery. Okay, just whip the negative lead off. And there we go, let's pop that down to one side so it can't touch the uh, battery terminal. And there we are, right, let's have a look inside the door. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the replacement motor. Now, unfortunately, these things aren't cheap. This was about 140 quid, and that was including a 15 pound, uh, sorry, a 15% discount um, from the dealer. Now, I did get free, free delivery on that, mind. Um, now, these motors are quite a common problem on, on these coupes. Um, I think they get a fairly hard time because obviously the window operates every time the door's opened and closed. Um, and obviously over time, it, it, it wears, so you know it's a wearable item, I guess. Um, so it's uh, it's hardly a surprise that um, it's going to give up, and it tends to be the driver's side door window that fails before the passenger one. Again, every time you drive the car, you're going in the driver's side, you're not going in the passenger side. So that stands to reason. Okay, let's put that to one side for the moment. Now, um, to get at the motor, we need to get the door card off, and to get the door card off, there's three bolts. Um, two are behind the handle trim here and another one is behind this little plastic lug just here. Each of the bolts are T20, um, so to get at them what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, get the trims off. Now the door handle is a little bit, it's a bit tricky to get off, um, it's quite tough, you don't have to worry too much about breaking it because it's quite, it's quite solid. Um, but under here there is a little lug where my finger, just where my finger is, just where my finger is. Um, where you can get in like a little pry bar. Now what I recommend using is these little plastic, these little plastic, uh, um, you know, trim tools basically, because they're plastic and they're not gonna damage anything. Uh, if you start getting screwdrivers in there, um, then you know, you, you, risk, uh, you risk damage. One thing I will say is that this pry bar won't get into there, so I will have to use a screwdriver on that one, but I'll just have to be very, very careful when I do so. Okay, so what I'll do first is I'll um, begin by taking all the trims off um, and then we can get at the bolts. Okay, let's get our little tool in that gap and give it a good levering out. And there we go. She's popped. It's quite stiff. It's held on by some little clips, um, which are quite, they grip it quite well. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said before, it's quite, it's quite a strong piece of trim. And you'll be doing well to break it. And there we are. These are the, these are the little clips that you're trying to overcome. And there's, oops, there's five of them all together. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and they go into these five lugs here. So yeah, that's what you're trying to overcome. Uh, let's pop that to one side. Okay, now we've got it off. We can see, we can see the screws. There's one just there and another one in the hole just there. And they are T20 which is what I've got here. Now, um, I'd, you're gonna need to get a, um, a thin uh, adapter for your hex head because um, you, you can't get into that one with a regular size socket, like a quarter, um, quarter inch size socket. So yeah, you'll need a, you need a thin one for this. 
let's crack these off. both off okay now just behind this little lug being gentle with the screwdriver we don't want to damage the plastic there we go and there is the last one okay now next thing we want to do is the uh, the window the window switch assembly needs to be popped out now at the back here there's two lugs which hold it in so it needs to be popped up from the front and then pulled forward there's the two lugs don't try and lever it from the back because if you snap the lugs off it will it will never fit again properly now what we're going to do here is just undo the cable now these plugs here in order to undo them this part here is sprung you just push down on that and then push this section this way and the plug will pop itself out just like so okay there we go pop that to one side right then now what we're doing is we're going to pop the door card off now all the way around the edge there's some plastic clips now these plastic clips grip the edge and they're quite tight so again with our plastic tool what we're going to do is we're going to push it in and we're just going to lever all the way around just popping them all off just like this as it as we're doing don't don't be tempted to put a screwdriver in here because you will damage your paint you're guaranteed to scratch the paint there and if you damage the paint all you're going to do is allow corrosion to set in uh, onto the metalwork and you don't want that okay now we're at this point what we need to do is there, there's um, a row of clips in the top here that hold the top seal uh, against the door so what we need to do is just gently push up and they'll all pop out just like that and then just lift it over over the door lock mechanism and that can be allowed to leave it there pull the cable that goes to the window switches out and then what we've got here is the door latch the door latch um, simply well, let me uh, get a little tool all right the door latch you just pop up and then it pops out just like so and then to refit it's the reverse it goes in like so and then just claps down all you got to do is make sure that that little lug there goes inside that little that little uh, part of the lever there uh, otherwise you won't be able to open your door put that out uh, one thing that did come off by itself is the little cable that goes to the speaker it just plugs in there um, just that just pops out as you can see it did it by itself okay so there we go uh, it looks like someone's been in here before because um, there's tape on the um, on the vapor barrier so uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll go inside there in a second let me just pop this to one side so it doesn't get damaged okay so with all that out of the way we can uh, we can see the vapor barrier and as i said a second ago someone's been in here before so i don't know whether they've um, attempted to uh fix the window at some point but i mean we've had this car for uh three years now and obviously this is the first time i've tried it so let's um let's pull back this vapor barrier and uh, and get at the motor so what i want to do is i want to be very gentle with this because it tears incredibly easily and it's held in with sealant as you can see this horrible black goopy stuff um, don't really want to don't really want to damage the sealant either because we can use it to stick it back on again afterwards um, we don't need to pull it all the way off e either it will only have to come back enough for us to get access to the actual motor it will probably be enough across the top it's very sticky but if you get it on your clothes it's on there forever it ain't coming off Being as, I'm being as gentle as I can so I don't rip the vapour barrier any more than it already is. 
Um, this vapor barrier is exactly that. It's a barrier to rain and stuff because obviously these seals uh, in the window aren't actually waterproof. They prevent a good chunk of the water coming through, but what does get down past the seal um, ends up inside the door. And if this wasn't here, it would end up inside the car. Um, there is a drain in the bottom of the door. Um, and obviously that's where the water drains out to, but you want to keep this vapor barrier intact so that the water doesn't end up inside your car. So, um, and the first time you'll know it is after a big downpour, you'll have wet carpets. Um, I did have that on my convertible a couple of years ago. Uh, it wasn't caused by the vapor barrier. It was coming in through the, uh, through the pocket where the roof folds into. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not very nice trying to dry out a soaking wet carpet that's absolutely sitting in three inches of water. Right, we'll get in there. Right, I'll just pull that cable out. And there we go. Let's pop that. I'll stick the, uh, the door lock to it, it'll keep it out of the way. Okay, so here we are. We can see the uh, we can see the window regulator now. Um, three Torx bolts holding it to the window regulator, and this little bracket at the back, um, which is secured with a little Phillips screw, and that bracket just is where that lug on the back of the motor fits into. What we're going to do is I'm going to crack off all the Torx bolts. Now I've switched to a T25 because these are slightly larger than the ones that hold the door card in. Let's just crack all these out. lug at the back here all I'm gonna do is just loosen it. it doesn't need to come all the way out all it does is just give it a little bit of lateral movement because it'll help us get the uh, the new motor back in and then all we need to do is pop the motor off the window regulator now one thing we do need to do as was what happened with me is the hub of the window regulator wanted to come with it um, and we don't want that to happen Let's pop, just click the actual clip yeah we don't want this hub here to come out with with the motor because all that will happen is the cable will unwind and then you'll never get it back together and you need it well you could but it's a pain so what we want to do is just make sure that that hub there isn't coming off with the motor if it is just get a little screwdriver in there and just lever it back um, and then uh, it should be fine Okay, so looking at the uh, the old motor, as you can see, it's in a bit of a it's in a bit of a worse state than the one that I'm about to fit back on the car. Um, it's uh, got a little bit of corrosion on the hub here. I don't know whether that's affecting uh, affecting its operation at all, um, but I think this is. I'm pretty sure this is the original part from the factory. Um, so yeah, so put that to one side and pick up the new one. Okay, so here we've got, um, obviously it's a toothed, toothed hole there, um, which will match up with the, the, uh, the teeth on the gear on the back of the motor. Um, what we need to do is get that lug into here. Um, but what we want to try and do is all of that at the same time. So pop that in the back and then get the tooth gear to engage in the regulator just like that it is a bit of a it is a bit fiddly but it will go it went in with a little bit of a pop there let's get these screws in to hold it in place it's worth noting that these uh, window regulators are sided um, this one won't fit on the passenger side door so if you're gonna buy one make sure you buy the right uh, the, the right side for your for your car uh, but the actual principle behind the switch is identical they're uh, exactly the same to uh, remove or refit it's just the motors the other way around Go. Let's get that 
bit out of the way. Just want to tighten this up just to make sure the motor's held securely. And there we are, nice and tight. Connector up. Okay, so far so good. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, test the motor to make sure that it's actually going to work. And I want to do that before I put all this back together and everything. Um, so what I'll do, uh, now we've finished messing around with the electrics to this point, um, I'm going to connect up the connect up the window switches. Again. Just making sure that they're going the right way around, which is that way. And then pop that over until it clicks and that's in. Okay, so what I'll do next, reconnect the battery and uh, we'll give the window a test. Okay, so battery connected. As you can see, window's working fine. It should, there, there we go. As you can see, it's, it's stopped just shy of the top and then that allows us on the coupe to close the door. And then once we close the door, it should pop up. What I'll do, I'll give that a quick test. I'll just tuck all of this junk out of the way so that it's not gonna get caught in the door. I'll just pop the door closed and hopefully the window should pop up just like that. And then when I drop it down, there we go. So it's working perfectly correctly. Now, all that remains is for me to put all this stuff back together. Now, putting it back together is basically reverse of removal. Um, I won't, uh, I won't bore you to tears with that. Uh, just follow the exact opposite of what you did to take it off and you won't go wrong. Okay, thank you very much for stopping by. Hopefully you found this, uh, this video useful and uh, it helps you to repair the window on your, on your BMW 1 Series. Um, if you did like it, then please give me a like. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and drop some comments below and uh, I'll do what I can to get back to you. Thank you very much, guys. See you all again soon. Bye-bye now.